Thank you. If you didn't know, Jesus is alive. <laughs> it's a wonderful message. Happy Easter to all of you, especially to our members and our guests and our visitors. It's wonderful to have you all here. I'm Pastor Carolyn. And when we get to the service where we have communion, just know that everybody is welcome. This is God's table, God's justice and liberty, and God's claim of forgiveness over everything. And love prevails in this meal that we share together. So everyone is welcome as you feel, as you feel. Does anyone need a worship bulletin? This is kind of will help you get through the worship service today because there's some responses for the congregation which you'll find in bold as we move through the service. And for especially the guests and the visitors, there is a bathroom back towards that last room you came through. And Paul, our usher, can help you find the bathroom if you should need. So thank you so much for being here. I invite you all to stand as you're able. We begin this service in the name of the Father and of the Son who is risen and the Holy Spirit that calls us and gathers us and enlightens us with the good news of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. The apostles proclaim this good news, that Jesus is Lord of all. By their witness, we know about Jesus of Nazareth, whom God anointed with the Holy Spirit and endowed with power. Jesus traveled around doing good and healing everyone oppressed because God was with him. We are witnesses, even today, of everything he did. They killed him by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him up on the third day. We continue with our call to resurrection life. People of God, we've arrived at the Lord's tomb. But the stone, stone has, has been moved, moved away. away. Look inside. Jesus, Jesus is, is not, not there. there. It's just as the angel said, Jesus is risen. Jesus is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Sin and death are no more. Amen. Amen. Let, Let us with all creation sing songs of joy. joy. We're at the part where the children of this congregation know probably what's going to happen next. If you are young in heart, if you are a child, I invite you forward to pour some water into the baptismal font. And if you'll notice when you come forward, the names of the children are written and posted and decorated on the font. And really, it's a reminder that God knows all of us in all of our names are on this font. Here we come, Robin and Stellan. Sasha, are you coming? We, I know, it's hard to get out of the pews. It's like amazing. Tip it in. Save some for your brother. Brothers. Thank you, Robin. There we go. All right, let's give some to Sasha. Tadashi, do you want to help? Ooh, a John Deere tractor. That's pretty fascinating. I have a Ooh. That's cool. You want to come up here, Tadashi, and help me pour the water? Yep, the step stool's right over there. Push it in. Any other kids? All right. All right, I see Henry. Henry, do you want to help? I know, it was a frenzy in the households today with the Easter Bunny and all the good gifts and nummy treats, right, Nicole? Henry, do you want to help? Do you want to help for it? There's a little step stool right over here. Oh, and he's got the bunny sweater on. It doesn't get better than that. All right, push it in. There we go. Tip it over. Yay. Thank you, Henry. All right, do you want to go sit with Mama? Okay. Happy Easter, kids. We praise you, O oh God, for this baptismal font. Through water and the word, you give us new life and uniting us with the family of Christ, bathing us in forgiveness and enlivening us through the Holy Spirit. We praise you, O oh God, for baptism. God, you are the ocean sustaining this earth. You are the river saving us from death. God, you are the fountain granting us forgiveness and life. 
We praise you, Lord. Amen. What are we about to hear? St. Paul writes to the Corinthians, the news of Jesus' death and resurrection astonished them. Many people converted upon hearing this message of God's grace. Here begins the reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Jesus died for our sins, he was buried, and he rose on the third day in line with the scriptures. He appeared to Peter, then to the twelve, and then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at once. Most of them are still alive to this day, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. And last of all, he appeared to me as if I were born at the wrong time. I'm the least important of the apostles. I don't deserve to be called an apostle because I persecuted God's church. I am what I am by God's grace. And God's grace hasn't been for nothing. In fact, I have worked harder than all the others. I mean, that is, it wasn't me, but the grace of God that is with me. So then, whether you heard the message from me or them, this is what we preach, and this is what you have believed. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray together. O oh God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, and by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Let us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. I invite the children to come forward for a minute. And I've got some things to hand out, so it might be easier if we kind of sit down. Do you want to follow me, Tadashi? You can certainly bring the John Deere tractor. One of the favorites, I bet. Did you just get that, or have you had that for a while? from Easter. I got Martin from Easter. Ooh, everybody. Ooh, Optimus Prime, the Transformers are pretty cool. Wow. Wow. Aren't their toys so much more interesting than when we were kids? Well, I have something for you that may not be as interesting or as transforming, in literally, as Optimus Prime. But there was something that happened that was really transforming. Jesus, who had died, was risen. He was raised from the dead three days after he died. And I have a story here with stickers that I'm going to give each of you a sticker sheet. Henry, Tadashi, and go Robin. You don't want it? Okay, you want to give it to your brother? Okay. And then I have a sheet of paper here where you can put the stickers and tell the story. So Jesus died because he loved the whole world so much, and God's love in Jesus was so powerful, was so strong, we can't even imagine. Like all the Transformers put together and all the Marvel superheroes and all of the DC superheroes, none of them can compare to the power of Jesus' love. Can you believe that? I know that's power. And Jesus was raised from the dead, and he came out of a tomb. And all of the women who went to help see his body and prepare his body were kind of afraid because they, when they went to see his dead body, they expected to see a dead body, and he was gone. Did you get one? Do you want another one? Okay. So I just want to remind you guys that on this day, this is such a day of love and just celebration that even when things seem like they can't rise, even from death, everything is possible with, with God. The stone was removed, an angel removed it, we think. 
You don't want the stickers, okay. Does anybody want extra stickers? Well, what I'm gonna do, because I know there might be some kids out there, and it doesn't matter, even for like kids like Bella, who might be 18 years old, they might think, oh, well, I want those stickers, right? Bella's thinking, I should have come up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put them on the back table, okay? All right, can we all say a prayer? God, we thank you for Jesus, for, for pulling him out of the tomb on that Easter morning, that first Easter morning. And as a reminder, we meet and celebrate today. We celebrate your love that transforms all of us. Today's Easter. Today's Easter. Amen. All right, you guys, you can go and sit back down with moms or dads or grandpas or who's ever here. All right? Yeah, you keep that. You're never going to sit back down? You're just going to stay up here, Robin? You want to go? And, yeah, there we go. <laughs> I see mom. She's like the shepherd. She's, she's, gonna, she's way back there. Do you want to? You can stay here if you want, but I think mom's going to say, where's my little boy, Robin? <laughs> okay. You can stay there if you want. It's fine with me. Well, while Robin's up there thinking about his stickers and telling the story through the stickers, I invite all of us to stand, and we're going to sing the gospel, Alleluia. It's good, Laura. And it's on page 9. Well, the introduction to the gospel. So Jesus died on the cross shortly before the Jewish day of Sabbath, before that began. So... This meant that his friends had to put his body quickly into the tomb because their religious laws wouldn't allow them to do so um, when the Sabbath began. So the story of Jesus' resurrection that we're about to hear in, God, in the Gospel from Mark that we know as Easter begins just before sunrise when the Sabbath was ending and Jesus' friends could then return to the tomb to finish preparing his body. The Gospel according to Mark, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they could go and anoint Jesus' dead body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they came to the tomb. They were saying to each other, who's going to roll away, who's going to roll away the the stone from the entrance for us. But when they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away, and it was a very large stone. Going to the tomb, they saw a young man in white robe, in a white robe, seated on the right side of the stone. And the women were startled. But the young man said to them, Don't be alarmed. You're looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. So go and tell his disciples, especially Peter, that he is going ahead of you into Galilee. You will see him there just as he told you. Overcome with terror and dread, the women fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated, dear church. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who is risen. It's an interesting story from Mark's gospel, isn't it? It's not like the ending that you would think. And the other gospel authors tell a different story. Filled with loving grief, the women who knew Jesus and who traveled with him and did ministry with him went to the tomb early that morning just as the Sabbath was ending because they wanted to prepare, to finish preparing his body. Some of the other Gospels tell us that they took hundreds of pounds of aloe and different spices to prepare his body, to anoint his body, a symbol of love. And on their way, they figure... How are we going to remove that stone? And it was a large stone. They loved Jesus. They didn't care that perhaps they wouldn't be able to remove the stone, but nonetheless, they hoped against hope. And when they get there, what did they find? The stone had already been removed. 
And we assume, although it doesn't say really who moved it, that young man dressed in white, that's that symbol for angel. Anytime you hear that, and the, they respond in fear. That's the right response if you see an angel of God. Fear in awe. The power of God moved the stone, and it said he was sitting on the right side. I could just see him on that stone, just sitting there. Knowing what's going to happen, there's always a little humor, I think, in some of the Gospels. And the women are in fear and terror. And the angel, the correct response that the angels always give is that they reassure the one who they are bringing the message to. They reassure the women, it's okay. I know that you're afraid. I know that you expected to find Jesus in the tomb, but he is not here. You're looking for him, but he is risen. So go and tell the disciples, and I love this version of the Bible, especially Peter. Peter was the one who denied Jesus how many times? Three. And Peter, like, probably needs more reassurance than anyone. So go and tell the disciples. Go tell those guys who are hiding in fear that Jesus is waiting for you already in Galilee. Go and tell this message. And they're so overwhelmed, they just run away in fear and terror. And they say nothing to anyone, period. So we think. In the original Greek that this is written, there's a word that doesn't get translated into English. And it's a weird ending. The last word in Mark's gospel after that, that they run away in fear and terror is, however. <laughs> the end. Okay, I'm done preaching. <laughs> however. And it just ends. The Greek word for that, just in case you want to know, you can throw this around today during your Easter celebrations, is gar. Gar, gar, sounds like a pirate. However, however, we're sitting here. Something happened. They leaked the message. They told Peter, the disciples, they all run to see where Jesus is in Galilee, and there they meet him. We know that because the testimony of Jesus' resurrection, even though we, like I said to the kids, when you go to a tomb, you expect to find a dead body, not with Jesus, it can be overwhelming. Can you imagine being there? However, gar, however, however, Jesus is risen and the message has been leaked and we are here. Now the interesting thing, how many of you, when you were little, love to have like a bedtime story read to you? Do you have to read, for the kids today, is that, is that like a bedtime ritual? We gotta and if you were able to stay awake to the ending of the story, I remember for me it was like all those little golden books, right? They weren't terribly long. And you'd wait. And you'd, what, what do the kids say when you get to the ending? However, or go back to the beginning. Read it again. Mom, read it again. Dad, whoever, read it again. And the parents, oh, and you can't skip any words. They know. Right, Henry? No skipping pages. Remember, you take a couple, I remember I had to babysit my little cousin, and I'd skip like three pages at a time. Oh, Caroline, you, oh, I'm like, Sam, I'm sorry, right? <laughs> this is what's interesting about Mark's gospel. It ends with however, but where was Jesus? In Galilee, waiting for them, ahead of them. And the really cool thing is that that was the place where it all began. It's like Jesus is saying, come on guys, come on women, go back to where it all began. Remember where the story began. Remember where our baptism began. Remember that you are named and claimed and loved by heart by God. Begin there. What I love is that the resurrection story isn't the ending. It brings us back to the beginning the beginning of God's heart, love for the world, poured out for the world, the world and humanity forgiven, love. We get to that end of the resurrection. Sometimes it seems the world doesn't change. I've heard people say, what does it matter? Look at the world. But because of the resurrection and because we go back to the story and remember our roots of love poured out for us today and every day, 
we know that we are not standing in the same place that we once were. Resurrection brings us back to the beginning. And that beginning is always God's love poured out for all of us, for all of the world, and especially where our burdens and our world struggle. We are not in the same place. Jesus is risen. Jesus is risen indeed. Alleluia. So go back to the beginning. Splash in the waters of baptism. Remember whose you are and whose you will always be. Amen.